Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and this is evening two of our keynotes for the first ever Learning Revolution Conference. It is such a pleasure to have Maria Gruchkova here. Uh, Maria, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, I'm really happy to, to be here, participate in revolution. Oh, what fun. Always wanted to do something like that. <laughs> We're revolutionaries. Thanks to, to Classflow for support for this conference and to Blackboard Collaborate for providing these ubiquitous, uh, actually usually quite stable rooms. And, uh, and as you can tell, we were able to make a quick, fast switch on this keynote room. So thanks for such a great service. Those of you who are in the room now can indicate where you're participating from by clicking on the star icon to the left of the map. It's the second icon down. And then click on the map. And then do put your location in the chat. Any other interesting details? Oh, I'll, I'll just love the geographic diversity that has already shown up here. Oh, how fun. I'm hoping that is actually someone from Brazil. So Singapore, Australia, India, Brazil, North America. How delightful. Thanks to those of you who are participating. And if you're listening to the recording, thanks for taking the time to do so. Maria, I'm going to get you started here. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thanks so much. We'll be here to help you. And let me know if there's anything I can do. And I'll stick through the Q&A if you would like to help moderate that. Hey, um, so I'm going to start. Uh, glad to he have everybody here. I'm Maria Dushkova. I'm a researcher and designer. I live in North Carolina, USA right now. I'm from Ukraine originally. So interesting things happening there now. And um, I want to talk about some things people do with mathematics and how such things can be supported uh, from the earliest childhood and on. So if you've been to my presentations lately, you know I usually start with this dream activity. So here is a meditative math picture, a fractal. Um, I want to ask you, when it comes to children and mathematics or students in mathematics, what are your dreams? What is it really all about for you? You can type it in chat. And uh, it's interesting, when I ask this question of young children, they usually say just, just dreams, beautiful things. They want to see space. They want to play. They want to see the world. They name their favorite things. Grown-ups also, when I ask for dreams, grown-ups name their worries, like they've here, no worksheets. So it's, it's all good uh, to name dreams and worries together. So um, I talk about uh, my profession as an adventurer. It's hard to explain. So I'm a developer and curriculum designer. I lead and design mass circles and help the mass circle movement. Um, I work and lead uh, Creative Commons publications like the Mabuse Models book there. Uh, we have a, a Delta Stream Media, it's a publishing house, or we call it an incubator for books. 
Uh, so we run open online courses. This is a fractal picture from our latest course about multiplication. And I work on game design, so that's one of the latest projects called uh, Contemporary Studies of the Zombie Apocalypse. It's uh, from an NSF grant. So um, we had a, a lot of uh, interest in um, the message that came out this year. Um, last year, we started at Natural Math, which is my company. We started to work on a series of activities for young calculus. And um, this spring, there was a lot of discussion about the topic uh, that we call five-year-olds can learn calculus. So um, the question is, well, can they? Should they? What are they doing here? So I'm going to zoom in on the structure. You can see uh, the kids building. And um, tr do try this at home. It's uh, called uh, multiplication towers. You can search it online. Uh, so this is a structure, as you can see, this is built in Minecraft. But you can easily uh, build it with Legos or beads or any, any other material, uh, cheese cubes, whatever. So uh, this is about the slope, as you can see. It's about uh, linear and nonlinear relationships. It's, a, it's about modeling a surface out of blocks. All these calculus ideas, very accessible for young kids. I've done it with kids as young as uh, three-year-olds, uh, four-year-olds. They can all do it. So uh, this is just one example of activities we design. Here is another try it at home thing, toddler algebra. So type in chat what is x, if you recognize it. And I know we have an international audience, so I try to select well, a piece of American culture, but more recognizable, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, people know. OK. So uh, this is something you um, can play as a memory game, of course. But you can also play it as an algebra game. With toddlers, you hide a favorite toy among the toys. The toddler knows what it is. And then the toddlers grow. So you can play the same game uh, with quantities, like the dog's uh, legs that are hidden, or with words from a known sentence. OK, what is the x in this word sentence? Um, does anyone know the quote? OK. Um, if it's a favorite quote, you can type it, type the word. If not, um, uh, imagine this being a quote you know, and so on. So that's a way to um, go from, uh, to take the same activity uh, from young kids, from toddlers to older kids, all the way to grown-up structures, uh, to the structures of equations. And um, I want to introduce some people, some grown-up people, who inspire such designs. Because I always get these questions, why do this uh, algebra with toddlers, why do calculus with five-year-olds, what is, is it really all about? OK, so some of my favorite people. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is Robert Lang. And his profession is an origami theorist. And uh, he actually folds origami for, for living. So he built, uh, he, he's here in front of the eyeglass uh, telescope, which when unfolded, well, that's a prototype. But when the thing is unfolded in space, it's as large as the island of Manhattan. So as you can imagine, it doesn't fly from Earth to space unfolded. And his skills in folding paper is very useful for NASA in building, folding, and unfolding telescopes so they fit into small boxes. Um, so um, if you ask Robert Lang what he's doing, he often mentions playing with paper. And it is one of the easiest, one of the cheapest modeling tools. 
paper. So you can try it at home. You can do this playful modeling with paper. You can watch Between the Folds, the movie, so very inspirational paper folding. Um, so what is behind this easy and complex activity? I use this word here, and I want to talk more about this as a design principle. And it took us a while to untangle it. natural mass. We had some discussions. So I want to stop at this diagram, the design principle of easy complexity, and discuss it. So um, as grown-ups, we try to protect our kids from hardship. And we should, probably. But um, if we go from hard to simple, it's not the way to go in mathematics. Uh, because it means uh, lack of choice, it means boredom, it just means lack of life, basically. Uh, in mathematics, it, it is. You don't want it to be simple, but you do want it to be easy. The thing can be simple and hard at one, like the worksheet. Now, um, to make an example, those work, uh, worksheets people mentioned, a hundred Simple problems are hard to solve. There are too many. But um, something like beautiful origami uh, can be easy because it's easy to get into it. You're just playing, you're folding, but it can be very, very complex together. So that's what we try to do. Um, we want ease to contradict the hardship. But we want complexity so we can promote exploration and freedom and adventure, all those good things we want in mathematics. So um, here is another example of an easy and complex activity. And I call it pocket infinity because it's made of pocket mirrors, and you can see infinity with it. Uh, so you can tape two mirrors together. And then you have a mirror book. And there are so many things you can do it here. It is used to make fractals, but you can also see symmetries with it. You can uh, make silly reflections of your faces. You can uh, explore letters or designs. All these things with just two mirrors. It's very easy to set up. It goes to very, very complex structures. Uh, and even young kids and toddlers can explore this complexity. So going to my next math, math person, um, your profession, uh, you, if you are in math, you probably have seen by heart. Your profession is math and musician. So she's an artist and mathematician. That's how she calls her. Uh, with, uh, is a drawing of her, a fun art of her, made by Ever Salazar, who's our artist in residence at Natural Math. And uh, she is a storyteller um, in whatever she does, even in sculpture. She's a storyteller. She's very convincing. My heart is when she tells people they can make mathematics how they want it. It's such a brave idea to me that you can do what you find beautiful and what you find meaningful. You can, uh, if you haven't heard of her, look up her videos. They are beautiful and meaningful. And so here is something you can try at home. That's a course online we are running. About 600 people signed up. Um, so it's going on right now uh, called natural mass multiplication. So it's mostly about algebra and calculus ideas for young kids. And here are the kids. You see them. Uh, These are kids, of course, participants. And the courses for parents and for teachers. And they are using whatever is meaningful for them. So there is a boy making a tree fractal out of the flag of Nepal. He lives in Nepal. Uh, here is a girl exploring fractals with her favorite animals, which is which are cats. In case it's hard to tell, well, she's um, young, but they are very cute uh, cats, uh, cats as kids draw them. 
and the other young artist made a self-portrait, I think, in fractals. So those kids are just doing mathematics in their own way with whatever is meaningful to them. And um, this is something else. There are more examples uh, from from the course. So one boy is playing with a very um, with a very uh, kinesthetic kind of gross motor skill um, movement of um, a fractal software. Um, uh, the website is um, mobilesnoodles.com. Uh, this is where this is where you can see some of some of these activities. So um, a girl is drawing a, a fractal. She she's been playing with software again, and now she's drawing her own. And here is a dad. He made a fractal song. He's a composer, so you can see a piano there. Uh, for his baby, and he's singing a fractal song uh, that he composed that accelerates, doubles, um, uh, slows down. Um, just it sounds like this fractals look. <laughs> so people are making mathematics their own here. People are uh, uh, people are building their own mathematics. And um, this is a design principle. Make math your own to make your own math. So uh, the design principle that I wanted to discuss is creating your own adventures. It's uh, creating your own content in ways that are meaningful to you. And this is how uh, this is how we do things. This is how um, we build stuff. So I <laughs> wanted to this mass is beautiful. I, I see chat. Um, um, I wanted to bring this picture up. We have this uh, on Pinterest. We have a board called Metaphors for Mathematics. Uh, so um, it it is one of the metaphors for mathematics. It is an awesome image, and I really like the word adventure because y you can uh, choose your your own adventure when you do it. It shows freedom, but it also this image shows a young kid. And how a young kid can have a very, this very emotional and real adventure, but in a very age-appropriate way. You can believe uh, this kid does it differently than the great ballerina Pavlova. Uh, so, but the, the ballerina and the artist support what the kid is doing, and her mom supports it. Her mom who took the picture. So. Um, that's how we want to do things in math. So here is another example to try at home. Um, it's uh, an activity, again, from this course. Uh, just because we are running it now, it's on my mind. So it's called Scale of the Universe. And you start with your own hand, because it's very easy to measure with your hand. And when you find things that are as long as your hand, and when you start measuring other things, you start doubling, you, you double again, whatever is two hands, whatever is four hands. So here are some girls measuring themselves again. Uh, they are, their arm span is as long as their six hands, I think, um, nine hands maybe, uh, hard to say. Um, and uh, here is a um, screenshot, uh, well, a series of screenshots from a very famous movie about zooming through the power of the universe. So uh, you can pretend play to go through tiny things, to go to big things, giant things. You can have this adventure in mathematics, again, with the youngest kids. And that's what makes, um, well, kids experience it, but also that's what makes this brave grown-ups like uh, space origami or mass musician. 
So here's another one of my heroes, uh, Hans Rosling. Uh, well, he's playing with Gapminder. It's a piece of analytic software. His profession is data superhero. How cool is that? So he addresses millions of people in TED Talks and different presentations online, um, probably hundreds of millions. Um, and his message is simple, let my data set change your mind. So how does that work? How, how does he do it? Uh, he's, uh, uh, he does not follow templates and patterns that don't make sense to him. So he makes his own tools. He builds tools to observe his own patterns. And then he shares the tools with others so other people can observe patterns too. So, for example, he says that the whole notion of developing nations is obsolete and uh, we, we, should, we need different categories now. And you can look at these two pictures, the screenshots I took from his tool today uh, just uh, to illustrate this. Um, you can go and play with the tool with the Gapminder and see for yourself what, what you see. Uh, in the last 50 years, uh, most countries moved from high birth rate, high child, child mortality, that developing nation stuff, except for Europe, which was orange there, and a couple of American countries. Uh, now, uh, the countries, most countries moved to low birth rate, low mortality. So, some, um, with the exception of one continent, mostly, and. Uh, now, you can see for yourself these changes. You can be convinced to, or not convinced, but you can change your own mind with this data. So, uh, this is his quest, helping people uh, make their own patterns of data. And I would say it's my quest, too, to help everybody notice and build and explore their own patterns in mathematics. So here is a little game for doing your own thing to try at home. Uh, you can uh, try a little what is game. Uh, it's uh, from our Math Mind Hacks series. Um, so just replace one object with another, see what happens. Uh, what if we had Saturn instead of the moon? Uh, what if we had one body part instead of the other? So you can focus on different mathematical objects with this, scale analysis, whatnot. You can also, uh, but it's just also open play. And uh, this is a point I want to make, to make, to become a master pattern drafter to change patterns, yes. Yes, it is scary, Brad. <laughs> Brace yourself. So um, we need to be brave, right? <laughs> OK. So um, you still, uh, you start by playing around. When you play, you can be brave, and you can make your own patterns. So you ask this, uh, what if questions? You play around, you are very free. So you start with free play, and, and then you notice mathematical patterns. After you play, you can notice some things, and then you can create and modify, remix other people's patterns, uh, and eventually you gain this mastery of patterns. But your mastery grows, but you are still playing. That's a big point. So the lowest pic picture here is from very grown-up mathematical conferences, conference called Bridges, but you can see uh, that people are still very playful. So from my toddlers and math circles to grown-ups who made these playful structures, it's all uh, the same continuity of free play and patterns and mastery. So. Where am I? I want to summarize this um, design principles uh, that I named. So the easy complexity principle, 
we want things to be easy but go grow complex. Um, making your own mathematics, making mathematics your own, uh, having adventures and being brave to select adventures, and this whole uh, movement from pre-play to noticing patterns, your own patterns, and to mastery of the patterns. So um, this is about the brave design, and I would like to invite everyone who is interested in it to join our course to play together. Uh, this is the uh, email you can reach me at. And uh, we have an Ask and Tell Hub a forum. Uh, so, um, and, and we have uh, a lot going on with courses, Creative Commons publications, um, and uh, different events and activities for mass circles. Uh, for parents and for teachers. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for uh, interesting chat. And uh, let's get to questions. So if you have a question for Maria, you can put it in the chat, or you can raise your virtual hand. Liz asks if you can save the PowerPoint. Yes, you can. Go up to the File menu, click on Save, and save the whiteboard. And you'll want to save it as a PDF uh, so that uh, you can actually view it. And Maria, I'm sorry, I had to go do something else. So I, if there were questions in the chat, I might have missed them. Um, did, uh, did you see them and answer them, or shall I look back and see if we can find some? Um, I don't think there have been any, but um, um, Brad asks, um, I think uh, Brad asks, using statistics to learn about the world, why isn't that taught more? Uh, Brad, this question is asked about a lot of mathematical subjects and a lot of uh, different mathematical um, Topics. Everybody has ideas, their favorite topics, and statistics is very useful. I agree that it could be taught. Um, at the same time, I almost say it. It's almost okay. I, I will say something really um, uh, strange here. In some sense, it almost it doesn't matter what parts of math you learn, especially initially, as long as you learn it deeply in a connected way and in ways meaningful for you. So mathematics is very connected. If you are learning it holistically, you'll probably get the other parts. They will just come up. They will get connected. So um, I think that discussion should be more about how can different people learn different pieces of mathematics rather than how can how can we make everybody learn a particular piece if it makes any sense I hope it does uh, but I it's a bigger discussion about um, basically um, selections of topics versus uh, everybody selects their own topic. Again, you can put a question in the chat, or you can raise your virtual hand. It's the third icon over, the hand icon in the participant window. Maria, I think you might be done. OK. Uh, if we don't have questions, um, then uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Well, somebody has a question. I think Alex does. OK. Alex, I'm going to give you microphone privileges. To turn your microphone on, you click on the talk button at the top left.
Hi, can I be heard now? Yes. Um, so th this is a thrilling talk. I'm I'm super interested to understand what I think is a little bit of the psychology behind the way an expert, um, probably innate mathematician, thinks. Um, am I to understand that your theory is that by studying by playing games that have to do with patterns that a child or even an adult will intuitively become more mathematically minded. Does that make sense? Um, I, I, I think it does, I hope. Uh, so uh, well, I want to distinguish play and games here. Now, play is an approach to life. It's uh, when you are open and free and experimental in what you do. Uh, so uh, this is what I mean by play. When you have uh, a lot of wiggle room, when you choose different things as you will, when you pursue your fancy, and when you are brave enough to have an adventure in low stakes situation. That's a playful uh, attitude or stance or situation. Now, a game is a set of rules with an outcome. Uh, now, there are role-playing games, that's a different story a bit, but um, a game is a pretty organized endeavor compared to play. So I, I'd like to distinguish here. Um, so what I'm saying, uh, the psychology of it is that when we open mathematics for play, when we help people make their own, this playful experimental approach, they will notice their own patterns. They will make their own patterns. They will make their own mathematics, their own conjectures, theorems, uh, formulas, designs. And then uh, that will develop mathematical mind. That's what mathematicians do. They make mathematics. I'm sorry, that's a banality, but that's the, there you are. So the, the, does, it, does it answer your question, Alex, or um, would you like to ask more? Yeah, capable of, more capable, less capable. Okay, this is a very interesting thing. So, um, there are many, many, many different kinds of play, and some people like role play, pretend play. Some people like to build and design and it's a type of play. Some people like social play, and some people like word play or puzzles, some building. So. Uh, a person who doesn't play, I think, is deeply psychologically distressed, especially a young child. Uh, Grown-ups play very subtly uh, and um, not much sometimes, which makes uh, um, there are questions about, the, even for a grown-up, how healthy it is not to play much. But uh, I think the best environment for free play is safe, but also in mathematics, you need a lot of scaffolds and support and playmates. It's a very social, mathematics is a very social endeavor. So you need, um, well, computer-based tools are very great for young kids because they scaffold interesting play. Um, but uh, you can use just people who provide, uh, who carry mathematical culture as your playmates. And uh, a lot of mathematical play can be done with the simplest, really simplest materials. You can draw in the sand. You can play with stones. You can uh, just uh, have uh, oral games, just talk, basically. So uh, the only thing that kills play is uh, a lack of freedom. You, so basically, you you need to be uh, you need to have choices to play. If you don't, you can't.
Does it answer your question, Liz? Yes, it does. That was that was very clarifying. I appreciate your time. Okay. Um, so this, this looks like all questions so far. Good questions. I um I I think if you want to um, ask more questions, um, you can email me later. Liz talks about changes about removing sandboxes. There are a lot of various changes like that, and um, I think. Um, it, I think we should. Um, I think we should take care of kids and their well-being. Um, and I think when when we see an environment where children are, it's up to us, the grown-ups, to provide for play, for, for for mathematical play, for for all sorts of play. Thank you, Maria. This has just been excellent. Thank you so much for for presenting tonight. It's really exciting. And thanks, everyone, for your questions. If you have any more questions, um, please raise your hand. We're happy to answer some more questions, and um, or you can ask in the chat. If there are not more questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Once again, thank you, Maria, for spending this time with us.